Hello, hello, and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host, Aurora, and I'm very happy to be spending some time with you today on this snowy April winter day in Canada. <laughs> Can you hear in my voice that I'm slowly but surely getting sick and tired of winter? I don't know. Maybe you do. All right. Long story short, uh, I make no claims to be a healthcare practitioner or any professional um, health advice person. If uh, you are on medication, if you are seeing a therapist, please don't make any changes based on what I say here because what I'm sharing is my experience, my opinions, And especially my tools that helped me throughout my 30s when I started my healing journey. Um, and it is tools that I wish I had in my teenage years and especially in my 20s. But it's okay. It's not too late. And I can hopefully offer some shortcuts to people out there who listen to this. And um, yeah, if you get value out of the episodes, please share with people you care or send a review on Apple Podcasts. It helps tremendously for other people to find the podcast and then to also feel empowered, inspired, and especially less lonely. We want to make sure to, to connect with people around the globe. And it's amazing to connect with people from... Sri Lanka, from Nepal, from Germany, my beloved country, and all over Europe. And I love that you, yeah, send donations. It makes it all so much easier. Um, it's a one, one woman show here. <laughs> I'm doing it all and I want to make sure that I spare you, you know, sponsors or weird advertisement. So it is going to stay free of advertisement, but to make it sustainable, please consider sending a little bit of a, yeah, donation. And for the people who've done that already, I love you. I care for you and I'm so motivated and will keep showing up. Today I want to talk about resistance, the resistance. Um, I have a request for an episode that I got a week ago or so and I will make sure to address it. Uh, we'll be talking about um, putting our phone away at times and how people react to that. So if we want to make sure to, you know, be more present with the people who are sitting right in front of us and we put our phone away and then somebody wants to reach us and then they get upset, how do we deal with feelings of guilt and how do we deal with overall, like, our phone addiction? I'm a number one phone addict, coffee addict, pineapple and avocado addict, and... Um, I just love talking about that because um, it's important to be um, to be aware of those little weird addictions that we have, and phone and screen addiction is a thing. It's a part of pretty much every every person's life unless they are very disciplined, and we can learn discipline with our phones. All right, without further ado, I want to talk about resistance today. Resolving, releasing resistance. So many of us are constantly trying to control and to find out before anything can start what an outcome could be. And when you ask people what they desire, what they want in their life, and I not only experienced that with my beloved coaching patients, uh, clients, but also with friends or family, they usually name what they do not want to see in the future. So, for example, I asked somebody... Um, 
where do you want to go vacationing, like travel? Where do you want to travel to next? Well, last time I went to Mexico and it wasn't that awesome, so I'm not going to go back there. Um, also, my vacation in Italy two years ago, I didn't really like the hotel, so I'm not going to go there. And I listen patiently, <laughs> but then can't help but point out that they didn't really answer my question. I asked what you wanted to do and not what you don't want to do. And it is a weird thing in the Western world. I'm just thinking, like, that's why I had to hesitate because... Maybe it's in other cultures too, but I notice that in the North American culture extremely that when you ask somebody what they want, that they first tell you all the things they don't want. And that is not how you get to your goal. That is not how you're going to have a fulfilled relationship. Um, and especially in relationships, if you keep pointing out the things that you don't like. So if every time you open up your mouth, it is about something that you want to change or differently, see being done differently or control, then your partner is going to get tired and sick of you very quickly. On the opposite side of that, if you point out things whenever stuff goes right then you create a beautiful, positive momentum in a relationship and things can flow more nicely. But let just the relationships be relationships for a moment and let's just focus on you right now and think about how we resist to relax. We resist to surrender. We want to have advice right away, we want to have solutions right away, we want instant gratification, we don't like waiting, we are impatient, and we resist the idea that things could be unfolding naturally. We resist the idea that magic can happen, that things can happen that we could have never anticipated. So with this episode today, I just want us to be aware for a second on how controlled our life and surroundings actually are and how this is not reality in, in life when it comes to, you know, the important stuff in life. Um, yeah, you can predict the weather. Uh, you can predict... Maybe when the next train is going to Berlin from Munich, um, you can predict when the next hockey game is going to be in Calgary. But what I mean is life in itself cannot be predicted. This is where death is such a huge teacher because death sometimes comes out of nowhere and teaches you how valuable life is without death I don't know if if we were not to die I don't know how much more wasteful we would be it'd be pretty scary actually um, but yeah going back to resistance is that we resist the chance that something could unfold beautifully without us controlling it we resist rest and relaxation. For most people, it is very, very tough to get into a relaxed state without numbing themselves with Netflix or alcohol or porn or whatever you can think of that is nice and distracting and an awesome dopamine hit. Um, it's, it's really a tough thing to um, put a finger on 
but I see it in my yoga classes here in the yurt, the relaxation classes I meant, um, it is hard for people to at first realize, okay, uh, I'm going to keep my eyes closed, I'm going to move slowly, I'm not going to push myself, and I'm going to use the pillows and bolsters in a way that I feel supported and can relax. For some people, this is really hard to do. And then after 10 minutes, 20 minutes, they start melting into these bolsters, and it's just so beautiful to see that, yeah, actually when there is a space created for people where they can relax and let go, it is easier but when you are at home when you have your monkey mind spinning and spinning and spinning when you have all distractions around you it is very tough to let go of control and to let go of certain thought patterns and belief systems so what I invite you to do in the future and that's actually a very cool thing to do and it changed so much in my life and it was inspired by a Jim Carrey movie called Yes Man a movie that I highly recommend um, I will make sure to put it in the show notes um, is a guy who kept saying no kept rejecting um, kept resisting And something happens to him, I forgot what it was, and then all of a sudden he starts saying yes to absolutely everything. And his life changes so much because he now is open to novelty, to surprises, and he has a trusting heart all of a sudden. At the beginning of the film, or first half of the film, You can tell that he's very rigid. He has his heart closed. He resists to see beauty. He can only see beauty uh, by what he knows and what feels familiar. But as soon as that event, like I think it was a pretty traumatic event that happens to him, um, changes him, he starts opening up his heart and starts to be curious and starts to be understanding and loving. And it's just so beautiful to see. And I wish that for everybody. I wish that for myself, for the family members I love, and my friends and all my listeners here, that you allow for beautiful little surprises. You allow to just wander through your city without looking at your phone and to look at the architecture, to try new foods, to talk to people that you would otherwise never talk to and to be just curious about what life has to offer for you and to know that it is not controllable. It's all just little moments of magic that happen that you can only see with an open heart. It is when you get invited to a party, to a birthday, to, I don't know, an art gallery, and you think, oh, I don't like art. Uh, Oh, I don't want to go and dress up tonight. Or, oh, I don't want to do this. Like all those anxiety excuses that come up because they want to keep you in your little bubble, your little comfort zone. I hope that over the next couple of days or maybe even weeks, you can say yes to a couple of things that in the past you would have said no to. And of course, it's not stupid things that will harm you or cause death or injury to people around you or yourself. But it is stuff that are things, sorry, that are going to pull you out of your comfort zone. And your ego, your little hurt ego, your little ego that wants to be in control all the time, that wants you to stay on your couch and stay small, is going to rebel. You're going to get maybe even headaches or you want to catch the flu, right? The, The ego is so intelligent and can trick your body really into feeling sick 
because it doesn't want to change and doesn't want to get out of the comfort zone, but that you remember my little episode here and maybe even watch that Jim Carrey movie called Yes Man and then realize how beautiful life can be when we just say a little more often yes to novelty. All right, my love, my dear one, I'm going to leave you with that, with all my love and care. If you have any episode requests, please don't hesitate to contact me on Facebook, Aurora Eggert, or on Instagram, Aurora Eggert Coaching, and I'd be more than happy to connect. All right, take really good care, and uh, yeah, I'll be out there very soon again. Bye-bye.